I worked at the library for over 20 years where I, I met my mentor, Lenny Bemis, who, who basically started the local history collection and it helped oversaw the indexing of the Trail Gazette and, all, and collected all kinds of oral histories and things like that. So, you know, so I was on, on a hike on McGregor Ranch when I ran into my my boss, uh, Claudine Perot, my former boss. I, I had retired from the library in 2007. And uh, she said that, that an editor was trying to contact me um, about writing a book. And I said, well, who might that be? And she wasn't sure. She And she emailed me the information and it was Arcadia Publishing. So really, the the book wasn't even on my radar. You know, I wasn't even thinking about it. But the editor told me that she had read some blogs that I wrote for Visit Estes Park when, when, when I worked for Estes Park. So, so I said, okay, I'll take a look, you know. And so she sent me a few books of uh, legendary locals in other in, in other localities like Texas and California and things like that. And I said, oh, this looks like a pretty interesting project. You know, so, but boy, it looks like a ton of work. Oh my gosh. So that that was the summer of 2014, about July, I think. And so I started making lists and of of people that might that, that might be in the book, you know. So, and I kind of started with you know the big names that we're all familiar with and the people who have written books about them you know like uh you know you have F.O. Stanley and Earl of Dunraven and Abner Sprague and the McGregors and Charlie Eagle Plume and and all those those people you know so you know and the fun part was just making up the lists you know I uh, my my um neighbor Diane Phillips said when when she heard that I was I was going to be working on this book she said well there better be some women in it you know and she was pretty adamant about that so I said okay yeah and so I you know I put in for instance climber Lisa Foster and homesteader Anna and uh Wolf from Dove and Amy Hamrick at Kind Coffee things like that so you know and another people that, that I want to include in the book were also uh, some of our town leaders, you know. And back in the old days, uh, the town called on its citizens, you know, its hardworking citizens to, to, uh, to become the town leaders. For instance, like Henry and Bernie Daniels built houses, Henry Tregent pumped gas, Clarence gave, Graves owned a uh, gas company, and Ron Brody sold groceries. You know, they all had to be in the book. And, um, and surprisingly, a lot of those guys also volunteered in the fire department and were on tons of committees and everything. So just reading about those guys was inspiring to me. And uh, another cool thing is usually when I went, talked to one person about including someone in the book, they said, well, have you thought about this person? For instance, uh, Diane, my, my wife's friend, Diane, Rayburns uh, suggested I talk to Bill Watson. And I learned about his father, Pop, and his ice delivery business, and I'd never heard about that. So that, that was pretty cool. Uh, when I stopped by Glenna Daniel's book uh, house to get uh, pictures, to pick up pictures, she started talking about her store, The uh, Spectrum. And I'm going, oh my gosh. It was like a hippie commune in 1969 in downtown Estes Park, you know, with the uh, with all the artists and painters and sculptors and everything, you know, so that 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 was a cool story for me to read read about. Um, you know, um, when I talked to Wendy Koenig about her Olympic years, she said, "Well, you ought to you ought to learn more about Paul Van Horn. He's the engineer who supervised uh, drilling the 13 mile tunnel under the Continental Divide for the." Colorado Big Thompson Water Project. I'm going, oh really? You know, I I knew Bill Van Horn from the Greater Ranch, but but I didn't know about his dad. So that that was an eye opener for me, you know. Um, and then uh, my wife worked at McGregor Ranch for seven eight years, and so you know I had to have the McGregors in there, 
you know, all the McGregors and Muriel McGregor. And then, the, you know, Eric Adams, who is who kind of got, got things rolling on the Gregor Ranch with the history, you know, kind of re revitalized the ranch as you were. And then I talked to Teddy Haynes about her, her husband, Bob, and his years at Rocky Mountain National Park. And um, she suggest, suggested I learn more about Herb Thompson, the artist, uh, Dr. Sam and Julie Luce, who I've never heard, heard of before, and uh, her friends, Ted and Lois Matthews. So I said, oh, wow. And she had, she had boxes and boxes of, of pictures and slides, which were just amazing, you know, so. And uh, then, you know, who I wanted to put in the book were, you know, I mean, Estes Park over the years has suffered some disasters, you know, I mean, some serious ones. I mean, 1976, the big Thompson flood was, was huge and I hadn't yet to arrive in town then. But I was I was on Elkhorn Avenue and watched the flood come down, come down Elkhorn in 1982 with the Lawn Lake flood, and so I I had to talk to uh, Steve Gillette, and he was a riot. I talked to him for a couple of hours, and and he was right there and saw the 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 water just coming down the lawn from from Lawn Lake and the Roaring River, and the trees just flying up and everything. And that was, that was an amazing story. He, he brought that to life for me. So I tried to put it on the page. And, uh, and also I wanted to include people who helped rebuild the town after the 82 flood, like Harry Tregent and, and EPURA director Art Anderson, who was also my boss when I wrote for a solar newspaper in town, Solar Utilization News. So. And then I wanted to include, you know, Steve and Becky Childs down in Glen, Glen Haven, you know, at the Glen Haven store and Ken and Marsha Hobart. And um, of course, Fire Chief Scott Dorman, who was in the middle of everything, you know, the fires and the floods. And um, I also worked on the um, honor flight here in town in Estes Park. And so I got to meet like Bob Brunson and Vern Mertz, two fellows who, who served in World War II. And so of course I needed to put uh, you know, the, some greatest generation in the book too. So with the, um, I wanted to cover a lot of the institutions, you know, like uh, Chile Camp, YMCA, the Rockies. My, my wife worked there a couple summers. Uh, local schools, including Eagle Rock, uh, the, the library of course, where I worked, fire department, Town, the town government, Rocky Mountain National Park. There's a whole history there. Uh, the Trail Gazette, you know, it, it was an award-winning new newspaper at one time. Uh, the Scottish Irish Festival, Rooftop Rodeo. You know, how did they start? Who kept them running? Uh, why are they successful? Um, you know, it's a tourist town, so I wanted to include some businesses. You know, like the taffy shop and one of the few places that makes their own taffy right in the shop. Um, how did Outdoor World start with the Petrosines, you know? Uh, plantation restaurant, the Wheel Bar, McDonald's Cookshop with Paulus Tag, uh, Kind Coffee, King's Casuals with um, Mary Whitaker, my, uh, my wife worked there, Brownfields, you know, you know, the list could go on. And then I wanted to include some of the landmarks uh, you know, what are the names, who are the people behind the names of the landmarks like the, uh, like the Aerial Tram, Park Theater, Birch Ruins, uh, Bond Park, Toll Memorial, uh, the Mall House, Baldwin Park, um, William Allen White Cabin, things like that. So, and then I wanted also, because for a tourist town, of course, some of the lodging the old time lodging places you know, like Anderson's Wonderview and Stanley Hotel, Glacier Lodge, Elkhorn Lodge, Ball Paid Inn, Chile, you know. Um, one thing I noticed is a lot of artists are drawn to Estes Park. So I wanted to include, you know, travel writer Isabella Bird, of course, painters Richard Talent, Dave Sterling, Al Wands, Greg Steiner. You know, I was lucky enough to talk to Greg Steiner and 
she had great stories about working with uh, Dave, uh, Dave Sterling at Bug Stuff Ranch. So, yeah, I could have talked to him all day. And, um, you know, the musicians like Dick Orleans and uh, Cowboy Brad, Hazel Baldwin. Uh, and then, of course, you have your, uh, your larger than life people, you know, who, if you live in this park, you knew these people and, and, and what they brought, they just add, add a certain texture to the town, like Crazy Ed Kelsch, uh, Minor Bill Currents, Mountain Man Tim Mayhew, uh, Charlie Eagleplum, uh, Phil Casey Martin, and, and Ned Linegar. Um, and, you know, our town wouldn't be our town without um, all the volunteers who made a difference, like, like Katie Spear and Harriet Burgess at the Women's Club and McGregor Ranch, Carolyn Fairbanks, who I learned just recently died, which just kind of breaks my heart. Uh, she was one of the first people I, I interviewed for the book. So she was at the Pet Association. And then, of course, Jean, Jean Weaver, the queen of recycling, and the Hazeltons and Ross Moore at the Senior Center. Um, Steve Mish and Lorraine Darley with a Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day feast, you know. And then surprisingly, I just looked around my own neighborhood and my next door neighbor is a, is a nationally known boot, boot maker, John Calvin. And I, you know, he came to work for, with Steve Comito in town years ago and now he's, he sends boots throughout the country. And then there's Swiss and Phil Switzer who lived right up the road, who owned the uh, Switzerland alpaca farm, Colorado's first alpaca farm, which was kind of cool. You know? so, so that's how I kind of got started on it. You know, I'll let other people ask questions. Well, Steve, I have one more question for you um, before sure. we open it up to the group. Um, like you mentioned, some of these folks kind of have, I mean, some of them have their own books written about them, many of which we've read for right. book club. Um, how did you decide what, I mean, you had such limited space, how did you decide um, what information you were gonna highlight for those individuals? You know, that was the toughest job for me because, because I didn't want to make, make a long, a long end entry for those people because there's books written about them and I, I couldn't really do them justice. So I just tried to synopsize, tried to, to hone it down. I started with, you know, maybe 300 words and then I trimmed it to 250 and then to 200. It was, you know, I tried to hit the highlights, I guess, you know, of other lives and, and how they Im impacted us as part. So yeah, it was a tough job and I did a ton of reading because I was, because I didn't read every book, but I skimmed, you know, all the books about these people. Like, yeah. So, yeah, it's not a very good answer, but I, <laughs> I, I kind of wrote this book and as something that maybe people would would read about this person, and then they say, oh, that that person sounds interesting. I'll go and read the book about him, you know, so or her. So, you know, so I, I hope that's good enough. Yeah. No, that's a great answer. Um, all right, so we're going to open it up the, to the group now. Does anybody have any general questions or comments to kick things off? Um, oh I thought boy. it was a great read. All right. Steve, uh, this is Neil Standard. I'm on the uh, board of trustees with the friends. And um, one of my part-time passions is doing a tour guiding in the Rocky Mountain National Park. And... Um, when I started doing that in 2016 or 17 or whenever, whenever your book came out, I bought it right away. And I just wanted you to know that um, part of my presentations involve some of the people in here and the length of your presentation of each of these people is just the right amount of information. It's not overwhelming, it's not underwhelming, it's just the right amount of information. And I uh, carry the book with me and I say, I got the information from this book and it's available at our museum, which is when it's open and so forth. So I just want you to know that um, it's uh, very well done. And um, uh, just, uh, I've got a bunch of other things. I don't want to monopolize the conversations, but um, a couple of weeks ago, I just happened to pick it up and I happened to 
happened on um, Carolyn Fairbanks picture. And I read it ah. and I thought, well, I've got to talk to her because I have a cousin in Iowa who is very much into animal rights and so forth. And I was shocked the next morning to pick up the newspaper and read her obituary. Absolutely dismayed and shocked. And I am uh, moving here in 2015. I missed so many of these, just missed so many of the people in your book, uh, uh, Jim Detterline and so forth and so forth. So uh, if we run out of time, run out of questions, I got some more I want to ask, but I'll let her, I won't try and monopolize it. Go ahead. Anybody else? Hmm. David, yeah. I, I had a question and it may seem, how did, I guess, how did Pat Washburn not make it to the book? To me, she's oh, a local no, girl. Well, her family's at the front of the book. Yeah, Joe, Joe Mills, you know, Joe Mills is her father, right? I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that she, her picture's in the book. So, you know, that's that's the hard part about this book is you're gonna upset people. <clears throat> well, how come Pat Washburn isn't in the book and Ed Kelsch is? You know, that's all. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair. But you know, I talked to Pat Washburn about the book, you know, and talked to her about her father Joe and Joe Mills, and and she gave me some pictures like like that cool picture that's in the book. And you're right, you know, she. There needs to be a volume two, and one of you has to write it. <laughs> Not me. I'm an engineer. Uh, is that is that her grandfather, Joe Mills? Is it is it yeah. her grandfather? I, yeah, I I'm, think so. yes. mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been since I've Steve, I've been. it was fun for me to go back and reminisce um, because I know most of the people in the book, and I had a good time. Reminiscing, oh, remembering. Oh, neat. neat. All well, thank people. you. Yes. Well, there's Derek. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Donna, did yeah. you have something? And then he's gone. Yes, I did. Just, just another um, question. Am I on? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the one that was just asked that I didn't want to ask. <laughs> but I'm just going to mention my dear friend. Um, of course, I was friends with uh, Enda Mills Kiley and have a ton of her letters that she wrote me. Which oh, yes. Oh, are yeah. my treasures. But every time we came to um, Estes Park, and for those of you that live there, I'm just, when I make faces, it's because I'm envious. Um, uh, we always invited Sybil Barnes to dinner. Oh, with yeah. yeah. And I, I Sybil Barnes just sent me a, a copy of the book about the women that I'm in, but it has my previous name on it. I may have it republished at my expense with my, I got my name back. But anyway, um, I was talked to her about it and I, I kind of said, well, you're not in it. And then she said that she helped you with it. And I just, I just want to put in my two cents about how much I honor and love Sybil Barnes. And we kind of lost touch for a while because I haven't been to Estes in a while. But when my parents lived in Lyons and who said, oh, we just took a little drive from Estes to Lyons, I almost, my heart almost died there because it's, I would love to be able to do that right now. But we got to know um, Sybil and then I was at a, an annual dinner of the Estes Park Museum and Enda was the speaker and darn if she didn't come in and sit right across from us and we started talking and that was the beginning of a, just a wonderful friendship and I wrote a piece about her for the for the Estes Park news that she put in her book. And I was really, I'm really proud of that. But I, I just want to add those two, those two names as people that I just love in Estes Park. But I love this book because I'm learning so much about, I, I think a local, you know, there are so many local people that, I mean, we come there, we like to hike. We're not really big touristy people. We think we're, you know, like locals. Well, of course we're not, but we act like, we try to act like we are. But, um, it's just so interesting to see where these things began. And, and when, when Enda was at uh, the nursing home in Longmont, I can't remember the name of it. We used to always stop at the taffy shop and take her taffy because she just loved the taffy from there. So thank you for a wonderful book. Oh, well, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I knew Sybil. I, I worked with Sybil at the library for, for several years. So. Uh -huh. She, so, knows, she did help, help me out with it. She said that, and I love it. Thank you. I enjoyed your pictures, the ones you chose. Was that difficult 
did you have to go back and forth to only choose one? But they were all, I like the size of them also. They were all visible. You, could, you didn't have to squint or anything. And it's just yeah. from the beginning, I liked that part of it. The pictures was the hardest part of the book. I, it was, uh, I, I was going to talk about it a little bit later, but since you brought it up, um, one of the places that I went to was the Trail Gazette to, uh, to get pictures. And, you know, it wasn't like I, I remember the Trail Gazette. There was only one guy in there, John Cordson, I think, the editor. And the whole rest of the rest of the place was dark. Everything, newspapers have changed so much. And I learned that one of the owners, when they bought the newspaper years ago, tossed the pictures. He, he tossed a bunch of pictures and just, he oh. says, oh, you have the negatives, you're, you're good. And I'm going, oh man, are you kidding me? And then they had a fire in the early 90s, I think. You know, and I think I published one of those pictures with, with Tim Asbury, I think. And, um, and a lot of those were lost there too. And, and some of them were singed, you know. And so I talked to the museum and got them together with, with the uh, Trail Gazette. And I think the, the museum got quite a, quite a few of those pictures, uh, the, the final remaining pictures. So hopefully that worked out. But you're right, pick, choosing the pictures was a difficult thing for me because, for instance, especially for like Bernie Daniels, I mean, Glenna had tons of pictures. You know, going back to to Bernie's father, and you know, and a lot of the town and everything. And then Greg Steiner had pictures of when he used to dance with the USO. You know, in Korea, it's like, oh man, I wish I could use those pictures. <laughs> you know, but yeah. So yeah, choosing the pictures was 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 diff was pretty difficult. Ted, uh, Teddy Haynes had. Uh, Bob, Bob Haynes was, was a great photographer and, and he, he took slides. So he had quite a few slides like Ted and Lois Matthews and, and the Lucy's, you know, who I'd never heard of before, but in the doctors. So. Really? Oh, they took care of my children and family years ago. Uh, who, who did the other Lucy's? The Lucy's, yes. They, oh, Dr. did they? Did they? And Sam and Julia. They're out where, um, by the rock shop, they had their office out there. Oh, did yeah, they? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's, that's neat, neat to hear. Neat to hear. Yeah. Good morning, Steve. It's Lynn Larkin. I'm new to the book club this, this year, but oh. an old timer. Good morning, Michaela. Oh, Good hi. Morning. Thank you Good for morning. all you did. I just wanted to say how much I enjoyed your book. I live in Loveland now, but years ago, I had a little story, and I come up to Estes all the time, I belong to Women's Club, but years ago, I had a little store next to uh, Greg and Ann Steiner before they built the, the shops, and he had a little shop there in Gaslight Square, and, and I had a little store called Wildwood, and I enjoyed them so much, and I also benefited so greatly because they had such a dedicated clientele that would come up from out of state and come to, and they would kind of trickle over to my shop. And so it was really, it was fun to be next to them. I talked to them a couple of years ago and was so grateful that they remembered some of our old stories and, and so forth. So, um, oh, forgive me on the phone. Um, I will mute. Anyway, thank you so much for such a wonderful book. Oh, you're welcome. Steve, I also want to thank you for this book. It's been great. Um, unlike some of the other folks here, I am not a long-term resident. I've been here since 2014. And this book was my introduction to the history here in the town. I've, I have since read many of the books that these folks have written or been written about them, but this was my start. And my other question for you is, was the editor easy to work with? Did you have any difficulty putting this book together um, through the, uh, the publishing company? Uh, yes, actually they, uh, uh, they were great to work with. You know, they, they gave me a, a year deadline which I thought, oh, that's, that's plenty of time. And then I realized it wasn't, you know? 
because the more I learned, the more the more I realized I didn't know, and 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 then I wanted to put a lot of people in the book who didn't end up in the book because because I was limited to the number of people. So um, yeah, they 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 were quite easy to work with, you know. Um, <clears throat> I, I wish I would have gotten more color pictures, you know, I mean, I didn't realize at the time that, oh yeah, we're going to put color pictures on the cover, you know, and I'm going, oh, you know, I wish, I wish I would have known that and I would have taken more and more color pictures, you know, because I was taking black and white and also most of the pictures that I got were black and white. So that, that was one thing where I wish I would have had a heads up, but but overall, it was it was a really good experience. I would recommend it. You know, you're not going to get rich doing this. You know, it's not. Uh, it's more a labor of love for sure. So. One one more question: When you weren't uh, when you weren't talking directly to the donor of a picture, did you have any copyright issues for pictures? Uh, I I I had a form that that I had them sign. So. For instance, like Glenna and Greg Steiner, you know, the ones and, and Teddy Haynes, I, I had them sign a release form. So, so and, and the editors helped me with that and, and they got me a copy of that to use. So I did that as, as, as backup. And then I got a lot, of, a lot of pictures from, I got permission from the museum and from Estes Park Museum and the, uh, the Lula Dorsey Museum out the YMCA, and of course the one at the Rocky Mountain National Park too, and, and McGregor Ranch. So I got their, their, their permission to, to, to use their collection. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Steve, this is, this is uh, Neil. Uh, Bob and I know each other we, who you just talked to, Bob and I know each other through the Newcomers Club in town. And it occurs to me that you would make an excellent speaker at um, our monthly meetings that we have in town. Are, are you living in Estes Park now uh, or you are? Uh, that's, a, that's a long story. That's a <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Um, in 2016, I moved to, Lori and I moved to uh, Loveland because her 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 mom was in the uh, in the nursing home there, and then two years later in 2018, my son got a job opportunity in Iowa working for my brother at a brewery company in Muscatine, Iowa, and so the whole family moved to Iowa. So now I'm looking outside at fog in, oh my in, in Muscatine, goodness. Iowa. Yeah, so this is where I graduated from high school. So this town is kind of my hometown. You know, I, I graduated from here, but so I'm not in Estes Park anymore, but I'd like to return. I mean, I've given a lot of programs on, on this book be, before it was published and after, after it was published. Uh, Derek, okay. Derek had, had me profile some people, you know, like uh, like the Coleman's and and Glenna and Bernie Daniels and stuff, you know. So I had programs at the museum about some of the people okay. in the book. Yeah. Okay. Well, we generally have our meetings once a month at some restaurant in town, and uh, generally fifty to eighty people will show up. Oh, wow. It occurs to me if we could arrange somehow to have you do a presentation at the Craig's. Uh, that would just be <laughs> no ideal. I'll, I'll get in touch with the people in newcomers, see if we can arrange something. You get a free dinner out of it. So, <laughs> dinner, so I, I, I just have to drive 800 miles. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, we have relatives in Des Moines. And oh, uh, do you? I know oh, we, it's, yeah, it's a day long trip to get there. So, so it's, it's interesting is, is the Iowa connection to Estes Park, for instance. Oh, lots of them. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For instance, the uh, the Coleman's who own, who own Ride a Cart, um, they actually owned a farm in Peyton, Iowa, which is a few miles away from Sheridan, Iowa, where my parents grew up. 
And mm. so they realized that it was easier to, to have kids ride around in go-karts than it was to farm. So, so they decided to open ride a cart, <laughs> like in the late 50s, I think. Yes. <clears throat> Anybody else? Kind of just general questions. Oh, hi. Can I speak up? Wait, come here, Leila. It's great tonight? to see you, Steve. It's been way too long. First, my daughter hi. wants to say hi too. Oh, it's been hi. Oh, well, you're growing hey. up. Hi. You probably wouldn't oh, even recognize her. She, she is growing up. Wow. <laughs> um, so, Steve, it's great to see you. Um, I was hoping you could kind of tell everybody about. Um, being able to interview people, it's definitely that double-edged sword. You know, keep in bringing it contemporary and including these people is awesome. But of course, you're not going to make everybody happy because they're always going to say, why didn't you include so-and-so and so-and-so? But at least you get them thinking about how many people we need to be interviewing right now. But can you shed some light on when you did get to interview some people, were you actually recording it? Were you just taking notes? Um, do you still have those notes, those types of things? Yes, I, I had a recording for a few people. For instance, Steve Gillette, I was recording him because he talked so fast and he was <laughs> he had all these stories. And so I I have some some maybe maybe they'd work as all in history. But I don't know. That's a that's maybe those, but I do have a ton of notes, you know, like I took notes most of the time. And so I I have file folders and computer files and notes, maybe 15% of, of the material got in the book itself. So I have all these notes, you know, Greg Steiner had all these stories, uh, Glenna Daniels, yeah. It, it was a lot of fun actually, you know? And then some people, I was like pulling teeth, you, you know, I went, I, I went into Steve Camito's, um, a, a shoe rep a boot repair place next to the post office and uh i said hi steve how's it going and he goes mm, okay you know and i'm going oh boy you know <laughs> but then, but then he warmed up and uh he's he's kind of a kind of prickly guy but yeah he had some great stories too but mainly i i took notes uh with you know scribbling like, like crazy is is mainly how, how i did it so I, I would be glad to share what I have with the with the uh, with the museum if you're interested. Um, and then I wanted to follow up too with another question. And I know you're very humble with this, but you have a natural talent for writing. I think everybody can recognize that. Can you kind of share? Because everybody might not be aware. Can you kind of share some of your other writing projects and publications with the group? Oh. Okay. And I'm also curious. Are you working on something now too? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm working on a family history, uh, some short stories about growing up in the Midwest that I'm um, that I'm taking from my from old letters that that my mom wrote to my grandparents, and of course my grandparents never threw anything away. So they had so when they died, we ended up with all these old letters that my mom wrote. And she has all these interesting details. So I have 15 or 20 short stories about our family growing up in the Midwest. Uh, also, back in early uh, 2002, I wrote a novel about my years in the, in the Navy during the Vietnam War. So I was aboard a, it's a novel about a young man aboard a U.S. Navy destroyer off the coast of Vietnam. And it's titled, um, Steve McQueen Would Be Proud. And it's kind of <laughs> Steve McQueen was my hero in the Sand Pebbles, so so I ended up um, you know making that the title of my book because my hero in the book was trying to be like Steve McQueen, and it just didn't work out for him at all. So so and then I wrote a novel about my year in Vietnam too, titled um, "Throwing Grenades at Gilligan's Island." So so there's a couple novels here. I think the I think the local um, library has those copies if you're interested in reading them. So, and you know, I'm working a lot on a lot of family history through Ancestry.com and, and, and stuff like that. So, a lot of family history. So I'm kind of expanding on on the biographies of my grandparents, my great grandparents, and stuff like that. 
And there's a third maybe novel that I've been trying to write and it's, it's dead in the water. So I'm spending a lot of time taking, helping take care of our three-year-old grandson who's, <laughs> who likes to be read to. So he loves books. And so, yeah, I'm having a good time with that. So staying pretty busy. <laughs> Thanks. All right, anybody else questions for Steve before I throw out some questions for you all? Um, well, I was just gonna mention something. I'm Kim McCormick and I do online auctions and I noticed there was a, something you wrote about Dave Sterling or Dave Sterling. And recently there's been some Estes Park online auctions, all kinds of paintings, pages and pages. And I hadn't read the book or didn't know this person, but I wish I'd have read it, but I was glad to see something about him in there so I could see a little bit what that was about. I didn't get anything, but on the auction. <laughs> Should have. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave Sterling was quite a character. He was a character. Oh boy, that's thunder here. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave Sterling is quite a, quite a character. He had a place called Bug Scuffle Ranch and people used to come out and, and, tour, and tour his gallery, tour, tour where, where he painted. Yeah, so yeah, that. he is. He, there ought to be a book written about him. And Greg Steiner <laughs> actually worked with him for years too. So, wow, that was cool to see. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and then he spent his evenings out at uh, where Harmony Ranch is now, singing and drinking <laughs> and entertaining people. Wow. <laughs> Oh, really? So, as a character. <laughs> I, 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 did you know Dave, Dave Sterling, Rosa? Yes. Oh, neat, neat. That's cool. He was a character. Well, kind of my next question is kind of along those same lines. Um, I know many of you know some of the individuals personally in the book. Um, was there someone that you had never heard of that you were excited to learn about? Oh. It was, it's, not that I, it's not that I had never heard of Roger Toll. I have kind of a affinity or interest or whatever in Roger Toll. Uh, Roger Toll was a charter member of the Colorado member Colorado Mountain Club. And my wife and I met at a Colorado Mountain Club function. And over the years, I learned a little bit more and more about him. Is um, everybody... Anybody familiar with the little whistle stop in unincorporated Gilpin County, Toland, T-O-L-L-A-N-D? Mm -hmm. Well, if I could, if you could let me belabor it for a minute or two and cut me off if, if, if I go on too long. But um, uh, in 1893, Charlie Toll and his wife Elizabeth bought property on the stage line next to Boulder Creek in Gilpin County. They paid $1,000 for the town of Mammoth. And they renamed it Toland. Uh, his last name was Toll, but it was pure coincidence that his wife was from, uh, his family is from Toland, England. And so they named it Toland after, after her family and so forth. Well, when the railroad, the Moffat Tunnel, or the uh, Rollins Pass and so forth was being built, the railroad went right by this whistle stop. And Charlie died of a heart attack or something like that in 1901, I think it was. And so she had four sons that she had to care for. And so when the railroad was going through there, she opened the Toland Inn. And it turned, it was the last stop before it went up over Rollins Pass, the Giant's Ladder and so forth. And she made good money on, on it and so forth. And she was able to educate her four sons, all of whom went on to become very well known in the Denver area and so forth. And Roger was the second son. And oh. uh, he went on to be superintendent of Rocky Mountain National Park in the 1920s oh, and man. so forth. And um, so when I do my tour guiding into Rocky Mountain National Park, I kind of take a survey of my customers and so forth. And if they seem fit enough, when we stop at Rock Cut, I take mm -hmm. them up to the Toll Memorial. 
and mm. uh, they just 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 love it, the picture taking and so forth. And I tell them about my affinity with Roger Toll and so forth. And um, Michaela, try and, try and keep it to one minute before I shut up. Uh, I was uh, when we lived in Gilpin County until 2015. I was vice president of the historical society there, and we organized a uh, historical tour from Rollinsville. If you ever have a chance, go to Rollinsville and go west out of Rollinsville toward the Moffat Tunnel. It's a beautiful drive. A lot of it goes alongside um, Boulder Creek and so forth. And uh, when we were living in Gilpin County, it was one of our favorite mountain bike gravel road tours to do. And uh, so I organized a uh, trip up to the Moffat Tunnel. And we would talk about the places on the way and so forth. And we would stop and I organized the first year to stop in Tolan and tell them about the history of Tolan. Well, first year we did it, we had four school bus fulls of people who wanted to do the tour. One of our biggest projects, money-making project. And the first bus took off and I was loading the second bus. And the first bus came driving back and said, some woman came out and is yelling at us and telling us to go away and, and so forth and so forth. And uh, so I drove up with the bus and I got off and she came out waving her arms and everything and yelling at me and so forth. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Didn't somebody clear this with you to stop here? And she said, no. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, she said, yeah, this first bus that came up, people were out looking in people's windows and everything and so forth walking around the place and so forth and said I would never have allowed that and I don't allow my people to do that so we went up to the tunnel and came back and next day Monday we had our board meeting and I complained about the fact that nobody had cleared this with this person and it turned out that she was a sixth generation descendant of Roger Toll. Oh, for goodness. I don't have her name written down I frantically looked for her when I knew we were having this meeting I couldn't find it but um I uh, okayed with the board to buy a dozen yellow, a dozen red roses. And the following the next day, Tuesday, I took them up and I went to her cabin and knocked on the door and I left a note on the door and so forth. And as I was walking away, she peeked her head out and said, are you the guy that came up yesterday? And I said, yeah. And I said, and I said uh, yeah, I, know, I go into, I love Rocky Mountain National Park and all this stuff. So if we talked for two hours. She gave me all sorts of information about all the descendants and so forth. And um, the next year, uh, we were, I cleared it with her to come up and stop in Tolan. And when the people came up, she invited everybody to get off the bus and she gathered everybody around her and told all this history about uh, going over to uh, Frazier on the Rollins Pass Railroad sometimes and so forth when it was still running. So I just wanted to, I, I had that offended with Roger Toll that uh, I'm glad to see, uh, I knew his name would be in a book and so forth. And I was glad to see it in there. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for that story. Um, anybody else? Did you uh, learn about someone you had never heard of before in this book? I know I did. That's a good one. I was privileged to make friends with uh, Bob Brunson. I'm sorry, I don't want to monopolize the whole thing. If you're sure. Oh, Bob's a great guy. Yeah, yeah I, I'm an amateur military historian, especially naval aviation history. And uh, so he and I hit it off right away. And I spent many an enjoyable hour having coffee with him at Kind Coffee, talking yeah. about his experiences and so forth. And um, I happen to know some of the names of the night fighter squadron that he was in off of the Enterprise. Oh, and, neat. Uh, Hey, a little trivia question for everybody. The Enterprise Car Company. Do you know what the Enterprise Car Company is named after? The hmm. Enterprise Aircraft Carrier. Yes, World War II. Yeah. yeah, that was responsible for uh, winning the Battle of Midway. And Bob Brunson knew him, uh, sort of kind of passing acquaintance and so forth, the founder of Enterprise Car Company. Oh. I'm just full of stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I would right. say uh, for me as a this is Bob Levitt as a new newer resident here um, you know the old time folks were interesting but the newer folks in here and then to actually go meet them in person for example Wendy, Wendy Koenig and uh, Amy Hamrick meeting these people in person after having read about them in the book and that was kind of neat right <clears throat> I'm so sorry I missed Jim Detterline. 
I, um, I worked for the Department of Interior in personnel for 24 years. I was a labor relations specialist and um, I learned about his problems why he was kind of forced to retire from the, from the Park Service. And um, I would love, I, I represented a lot of people as a labor relations specialist who were under pressure for this and that and so forth. And I would love to represent Jim met, met him. I, I'm, if I get 10 feet off the ground, I get vertigo. So I'm not much of a climber, but uh, I'd love to have met him, talked over our experiences working with the Department of the Interior. All right, anybody else? Yeah, you, one, someone one new? of the people that, uh, that I had never heard of was uh, Guy Lacoste, who was an early developer. And, and uh, Bruno Hobbs from, from the YMCA, who was one of the founders of the YMCA. So those, those are a couple. Yeah. And oh yeah, and then um, Scott Dorman, when I was interviewing him, he said, well, do you know who, who designed the, uh, the, the tram, you know, the aerial tram? And I said, I have no idea who that was. And so he, he got me interested in finding out about uh, Robert Heron. The fellow who, who designed the, uh, the aerial train. This is Bob Levitt again. Um, after um, reading the book, then I went to a Long's Peak reunion at the YMCA. It was in 2015. And I met Jim Detterlein, Lisa Foster, and Tom Hornby. And, oh, neat. Yeah, and it was really, they, they all had presentations and stories to tell. So, um, it was a way to get more into what they do in the climbing community, which is a whole different area of our community. So I was glad to be able to meet them and also read about them in the book. Those climbing guys are great storytellers as well as climbers. Yeah. Uh, Ernie Petrosine, I, uh, I'm chair of the car show that we have at the um, event center every July 4th. And I first met, first met Ernie when he entered a couple of his uh, Teslas. And so I said, well, this guy must be well off. I had no idea who, I'd never met him. I had no idea about his connection. And um, I just happened to read in the book about uh, his dad was in the Rotary Club and all that stuff. And uh, so. I, I, I knew Pep, Pep Petrosine. Um, he was, he got into computers later and he, he sold sold the library our first computers, so so I got to know no Pep in, in that way. All right, so kind of along. Oh, sorry, Rosa, did you have something? No, I'm just okay. remembering <laughs> Pep. I have fond Pep. memories of Pep. That's all. <laughs> all right, along those same lines. Um, if you could meet someone from the book that you haven't already met, who would it be? Oh. <laughs> Take your time. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Jim Detterline. Um, Neil says Jim Detterline. I think for me, after last month, Nina, mine would be Anna Wolf from Dove. Yeah. Okay. Lisa Foster. Lisa Foster, yeah, absolutely. Dick Orleans. <laughs> I moved here when he was here. Dick Orleans, but never saw him perform or talk to him or saw him or anything. Sure. I've had the privilege of getting to know uh, Nick Molay uh, mm -hmm. and kind of passing acquaintance and so forth. And um, I, um, act, I met his daughter who works for a visit at Estes Park, didn't even know who she was and, mm -hmm. and talked with her three or four times before she happened to mention her last name. And I, Oh, is Nick your dad? She says, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brad Fitch, I've had the privilege of talking with him a couple of times. And my wife and I belong to the John Denver uh, Foundation and so forth. Uh, yeah, anybody else who, from the book, if you have, the rule is you haven't, you can't have already met them. Who would you <laughs> like to meet? I want to meet the uh, the lady homesteaders. That's how yeah. they did that. Uh, Wolfram, or I think um, Enos Mills' wife homesteaded. Esther. And how did they? Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Catherine, Catherine. Catherine. I Catherine Garretson. She's. Yeah. I want to hear about their Christmas Eve dinner. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
I'm obsessed with that story. I just, love, we always read that on Christmas Eve, or I do, I'm alone now. I always, I always read that on Christmas Eve. I love that Christmas story. That's, yeah. I'm freezing in my house, because it's, you know. <laughs> Who's yeah. uh, Muriel McGregor? Oh, yes. Because I love the McGregor Ranch. I remember her, her car, when she got older. Ah. It, it was, uh, Stuff the back seat was stuffed with junk, I guess you'd say, <laughs> when she'd drive around town. It's so nice how the park and the McGregor Ranch uh, kind of cooperate there. I like that area. Oh, yes. So thankful for that land. Yeah, it's great that it's all preserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Anybody else, if you could meet someone from the book? How about Not Isabella so much Bird? Now, uh, Isabella the Bird. Yeah. <laughs> Isabella, that would be a good one. Yes, I yeah. would like to her. I, I actually met Phil Martin, Phil Casey Martin, when I was a kid. I rode in his train. <laughs> yeah. uh. <laughs> and he taught sixth grade for years and years. I substituted for him one winter when he had back surgery, mm. but he was so popular downtown with his train and his wonderful verses. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I would like to meet the author of this book, if you guys are able to coerce him back to Colorado. <laughs> oh, I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah, kind of well, well, and do a, and give a presentation. I would love to meet you in person. I, and got, I, I feel like I've met you years and years ago. Yeah, yeah. You look familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you. <laughs> Estes was a pretty small town back in those days. Right, right. The uh, Coleman's who run the ride a cart. Uh, I was in charge with the newcomers club for a year for getting speakers. And I also belonged to the aviation club in town. The aviation club, uh, I forget which one it was, uh, Don or Gary. One of them was a pilot with an air, airline company and they had a huge wreck. He was in a huge airplane crash, big rescue operation and so forth uh, some time back. And he came to the aviation club and talked about that. And, uh, he gave he a program to library on that experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so um, my next question for you all. Um, Estes Park seems to kind of attract um, a lot of notable folks, right, who are very involved in our community. They're involved in the National Park. They're doing kind of all kinds of amazing things locally, nationally. What do you think it is about Estes Park um, that attracts these kinds of folks that we can write a whole book about them. That's true. Mm. I remember meeting Chris Hazelton years ago when we first started coming. Well, it was, actually it was after we, because we were coming before then. And I was just amazed at what they did and how they did it and moved to Estes Park. And I just admire them so much for what they've done. So I, I don't know, I think it's just the love of this beautiful place. And I was mm -hmm. feeling so sorry for myself because I'm sitting in central Illinois with thunder and rain too. And was when Steve said he was in Iowa, I felt a little better, but not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> We're very glad you can join us and ask this virtually. Oh, I'm so happy about this, you know that. <laughs> I think it's- Donna, I've really asked you before, community. where do you live in Illinois? Uh, Jacksonville, Illinois, west of Springfield. Oh. I'm from Chicago, yeah, yes. but I went to school here and never and forgot to leave. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm from uh, Galesburg. Oh, okay. So. Oh, sure. yeah. My sure. sister-in-law yeah. is from Galesburg. Yeah. I grew up in Barrington Hills, northwest of Chicago. Yeah, and I grew up in Park oh. Ridge. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, my sister and Hillary went to high school together. When I say that, then people know where Park Ridge is. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, what is your sister-in-law's last name? Well, name. And I, I was just thinking you may have known because her dad, Gagno, a French spelling, um, 
I think he ran the Sears store there in Galesburg, which was a pretty big business there, you know. It back was. A it was back time. He was such a, a fine gentleman. I know he was, her name is Vicki Ganyu, and uh, her brother was Ray, and her dad was Ray Sr. And um, okay. it was. It doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. I graduated in sixty. I graduated in sixty one from high school. So he graduated in sixty four, I believe. So I'm sure you probably, probably you know, from Gail. My high sister school. knows him. Yes, yeah. Vicky Ganyu. I'll tell her she's she's in Roscoe. I'll tell her that I spoke with you. That's so <laughs> neat. Okay. Wow. Well, I can't wait to get us all back in you know the same room but it is nice that folks can join us from illinois from iowa um, so that's that's pretty fun so thank you all for being here today you. our illinois you're contingent <laughs> michaela your assignment your assignment is whenever we have these book club meetings in the future to include these people you're gonna you're gonna have to set up the tv set and everything <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured do. out <laughs> we'll get it figured out okay. so i'm gonna circle back again um yeah linda I just wanted to say in uh, answer to your last question, mm -hmm. I think it, I think Estes calls creative, independent people, but you also see once you're here, the need for community and working together. So it creates uh, this wonderful sense that creates Mountain Strong really. And we all need each other, but people with a lot of special skills and um, and backgrounds come to Estes. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Steve, you'd mentioned this earlier. You know, Estes has seen a lot of um, kind of natural disasters over the course of its history, um, and we saw it again this fall. Um, do you guys? Um, in reading about, you know, the 76 flood or living through the 76 flood, the 82 flood, did you see that, did you see that kind of community again this fall, do you think, um, with the buyers or folks who are here? Oh. oh, Linda, you're muted. No. Oh. She's trying still to find the icon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes, I saw it with uh, my friends. We were constantly checking on each other, uh, texting to make sure when we were, many of us were rolling down the hill, uh, down 36 or whether it was 34, uh, making sure that people were okay. And that continues. Um, so I, the fire, the floods, uh, we've lived through a lot and we all depend on each other. It's true. I was gonna say during, with the fires, the neighbors up on Windcliff, all the help that we had and people going up and making sure that the houses were winterized when all the electricity was turned off and that, you know, things were taken care of and that, you know, just making sure that everybody was all right and off and t it was, it was great to see. And people are, um, very, people are very giving as far as donations and so on. Whenever we have a disaster, it's, it's just pretty amazing. And Bob, I was going to ask you to back me up on this, being in the newcomers club. Whenever we have new people come in, we're always struck by how many professional people, people who are retiring from their own businesses and high level uh, mechanical engineers and so forth. And sometimes with my college degree in social studies, I feel kind of out of place sometimes <laughs> the newcomers club with all the professionals we get in town. And they're used to being, well, I don't, I don't know about the word aggressive, but they're used to being involved and they're used to being part of the community and so forth. And um, I might bring my own bell here a second. I myself am guilty of that. Uh, when we lived in Gilpin County for 20 years, I was very involved. 
there was a group of about 30 of us that were, we were kind of incestuous. Everything, the Democratic Party and uh, the Gilpin County uh, Rotary Clubs and so forth, we'd all see each other every, every time that a function was held somewhere. And so we're all used to organizing things and being part of the community and so forth. And a lot of us give up relatives and friends uh, uh, to move here. And one last thing, in, my, in doing my tours in Rocky Mountain National Park, I'm always struck by how many, I call them high level people we get uh, who are retired business people and they're checking out Estes Park to see if they want to live here and they want to, and the question, the information I give them about the history of Estes Park and so forth, they say, oh man, we got to check it out and so forth. So um, I'm always, it's just, the community we have is just people that are used to organizing things and being a part of things and so forth. Comes right in. Mm -hmm. I think there's great family histories too. Even if some generations move to Illinois or wherever, it, we come back because our grandparents were here and and parents mm -hmm. and there's just a great family tradition and family history within our own individual families. I think, I know my grandparents were here before I was born. And one time, Mr. Trumbull, you know, of Lean and Tree Cards, one time he got a big map out for me in his office and he showed me where my grandparents lived in Boulder. Pennsylvania Avenue went through what's now the campus and, um, it's, there's just a great sense of that, especially as time goes on and as we get older, I think we care more and more about our roots. And this, we, there are roots here for so many of us. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, my husband's family, his grandfather was the first superintendent of the fish hatchery. Oh, so that means way back. That's way really back. Nice. They lived here and his. His dad and his twin brother uh, went to First World War from signed up to the Marines from Estes Park. And uh, they have a lot of stories. The, the fish hatchery was really out of town in those days. It was a trip to come into town. Mm -hmm. And they came in by horseback and had to open eight gates to get to town. <laughs> Do you need to write a book? Do you need to write a book? Oh, well, I have a lot of scrapbooks, that's for sure. Yes. Fantastic. Well, speaking of, to kind of jump off Lynn's question, um, like we had mentioned earlier, many of the folks in this book have their own books, like we read last month with um, Anna Wolf from Dove and Nina's work. Um, was there somebody in this book that you would like to see a full length book about? I send you all leaping through pages. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Mall, I oh, kind, what of a humorous side, kind of a humorous <laughs> side. Uh, when we first moved here in July of 2015, I found out about Mall Road and I drove up and down that road three times looking for a shopping mall. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, Esther Grinnell Mills, um, I've often wondered if there's enough material available about her for a book. Um, and maybe Donna, you might know more about that since you know, <clears throat> or knew Enda Mills Kylie so well. I, you know, she has, I don't know if her granddaughters are still around, uh, but she's fascinating. The fact that, you know, she ran that Long's Peak Inn for many, many years after Enos Mills died. And she was a female single woman homesteader before she married Enos. So she had quite an interesting life. And uh, I've, I've often wondered if there's enough material about her for a whole book. That's a good, that's a good idea. And Enda always talked about her father as if he, I mean, she always had to remind me that she really didn't remember him. It was all through her mother. So um, that, that's a good idea. One of us should do that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have those letters that, you know, talk about her, but mostly about her father. And I even said to Enda, she should write a book. And she said, no, it's just about my father. You know, I'm, I'm just nobody. And 
that wasn't true at all because <laughs> she was just I, I would spend a time with her and just feel like I was with living history and I I'm almost crying thinking about it now because those were wonderful visits just wonderful so well, women, uh, women have historically really been ignored in in history and uh, so that's why I would lo really love to see uh, more about her there's so much about Enos but she had a remarkable life too mm -hmm. she did yeah, and uh, Aaron Mills and uh, Beth Mills are still around. Aaron, in particular, would be approachable mm -hmm. on this type mm -hmm. of topic. Uh, she's also started to do some history and has her own website and things like that. She's written some articles. So if you want to find out about what's going on or what did go on in the Mills family, those would be the people to approach. Mm -hmm. Bob, do you know her website address or what it's called or anything? I do. Um, don't have it right in front of me now, but um, is it the Anus Mills Cabin? Is that yeah, right? Mills, yeah. Exactly, MillsCabin.org, or I think it is what it's it is. Fine, Anus yes. Mills Cabin. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we used to take her to dinner too with with Enda occasionally. She was so busy all the time, but once in a while she'd go, and she was delightful. But this goes back a while, so mm -hmm. yeah, great. Mm -hmm. I don't know about making a book, but um, I would love to see Amy Hamrick do a presentation about her experiences running Kind Coffee. Oh. I bet she has all, all kinds yeah. of stories to tell mm -hmm. if she would do do that. I have my Be Kind stone on my dressing table every day and it mostly helps, but not always. <laughs> Uh, uh, an interesting thing about Amy is is her uncle is is Dick Orleans, so that's oh, the reason yeah. why she came to Estes awesome. Park. Yeah, I discovered all, all these different connections between people. This person came because this person lived here and things like that. So that's kind of cool. So uh, I'm going back in time. Uh, I'm actually writing an essay on a person named James McLaughlin who was in the Estes Valley at the same time of Griff Evans and had a ranch here, the second ranch in the valley. And mm. I'm working on that. I'm also working on a broader history of the Southern Estes Valley, including that time frame as well as all the way up to current time frame and, and Carriage Hills area and so on. So okay. I'm working on those two things. <laughs> yeah, Kim, you know about that. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're very Yes, you have a lot of information in you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been talking to people, interviewing some of the old time, long, long term residents in the Carriage Hills area for the Great. more modern yes. part of the book. And the older <laughs> part of the book I've been using the Trail Gazette and other sources, books other people have written in the past. And I've interviewed uh, Bill Sweet. Uh, he has the Turlene, Tur uh over on uh, uh, off of Fish Creek Road, and also uh, Don Chili for the, the Chili Camp yeah. history. Mm, so. sweet, yeah. Bob, who is that again that you were talking about? You're writing an article about. Would you give me the name again? Um, the person, the the one that I'm doing the essay on is named James McLaughlin. Okay. M C L A L A U G H L I N. And as he mentioned in, um, I always call it No Sane Woman. You know what I'm talking about, Isabella Bird's book. He is not mentioned in, in Isabella, but he is he is mentioned in the writings of Abner Sprague. Okay, good. He's always given an afterthought kind of thing. And yet he had a ranch here. So that intrigued me, especially when J Jim Pickering said, I think his ranch was located in the area of Carriage Hills, you know? So I go, Oh, and uh, next month I'm going to do a program. This is kind of an advertisement, I guess, on April 9th uh, about James McLaughlin and what I've learned about the early days in the Estes Valley. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so that's kind of odd. Are you doing that? Are you doing that Zoom or? What yeah, I'm doing, it, I'm doing it Zoom, and I'll have a bunch of you know documents and things that I've uncovered, and also it's partly about how you go about doing research on old time stuff. So oh, it, in yeah. other words, the sources I used. 
Can we invite up. ourselves to it or is it secret or? No, it's, <laughs> no, it's not a secret. Actually, it's in the latest newsletter for oh, April. Okay, right? super, um, super. But I don't think M Michaela ha and um, has put out a anything on it yet. Okay, I can't wait, thank you. Yeah, we yeah. haven't advertised it yet, Bob, but this will be our first, like you said, we're gonna give it a shout out right here. So guys, just keep an eye on our Facebook and um, our website and we'll have that Zoom link up. Um, and like Bob said, it's gonna be um, April 9th. I can't remember the time right offhand. I think it's in the afternoon. After, afternoon sometime, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm interested in publishing because I wanna know, you know, I haven't published anything before. I'm a newbie, newbie that way. So I wanna know different tips on uh, getting a book published or getting an essay published. And uh, libraries kind of helping me with that too. Mm -hmm. Great. Nice. Richard, did you have a question? Um, are, are you going to talk, uh, talk about next month's meeting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, when you're ready, let me make a plug too. You got it. All right. So one final question. We'll, we'll come back to our legendary locals with one final question, which we've already kind of hit on a little bit. If there was a volume two, Steve, I'm not volunteering you for this. But if there was, <laughs> if there was a volume two, who would you like to see in it? Oh my goodness. How about, we've oh, talked how about, about Walt Tishma? Does anybody know who that is? Who? Walt Tishma, the park ranger that- Oh well, yeah. 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 Tishma, I have so many pictures. We, we always seem to run into him at the Estes Park or at the Longs Peak Trailhead, I think. Not that we got much farther than the trailhead, but uh, <clears throat> ran into him quite often. And I don't know, I always thought he was kind of a neat and probably had some stories, but he's gone. I think he died. I'm pretty sure he yeah. did. He was fun. And that's kind of a, one of those weird things that happened while we were there. Thank you. Bob, I'd like to see uh, Sherry and Bob Unruh included in a book like this. What do you think? Well, they've, they've done a lot in the community. So that would be a possibility. Yeah, especially Sherry. Yeah, anybody else we'd like to see included in volume two? Yeah, I remember at one of the 1917, I think it was book group clubs, um, somebody mentioned John Adams, the founder of the country, his nephew lived here or something, and <laughs> more information about that. John Adams, who was, you know, a president and one of the revolutionaries in Boston and like a great nephew or something lived here in Estes Park. And I remember a few people talking, having met him, but I don't know much about his presence here. That's my thought. Yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Any, so any final questions for Steve about the book or comments? I just wanted to ask Steve if you were here when the library was renovated and were involved with the plans on the renovation of it or the rebuild. Well, I don't even know where the original library 